Willie D. Live. The the show that you did back in the day with Monique, the Monique show. Yeah. How many episodes did you do? I only did that one. You only did it? I did that one. They called me one day. It was just a random call. They was like, can you get down here? I was like, hell yeah, I can get down there. Yeah. So I went and I um I performed a few jokes. Didn't even, you know what I mean? Just a midday call. Went down there and, and hit them with some shit, and it came out. And it was one of those ones that's just stuck. Mm-hmm. Just stuck. It was that was a, a dope ass experience because I really was just at the crib, ain't have shit going on that day, and I guess they had some guests that flip flop. You know how that TV mm-hmm. shit go, and they was like, "Can you come down here and do a set?" I was like, "You know what? I got one ready for TV right now," and it, it worked out, and it was just dope because it was just one of those authentic moments. That was one of the first times I really got to just chop it up with Monique, and and feel her energy and her spirit. She's a great person, a great woman. And she believed in me. She said some shit that that stuck with me on that on that episode. So it was just dope. And I big salute to Monique. There's a lot of those people like that who were just like in the game before me that just welcomed me to the comedy game. Like last night, me and George Lopez had a show in San Antonio. And the way the theater was set up, it was like I was in the front and then he was in the back. It was like one of those, you know, dual, like, opera house type things. So I had my show going on. He had his show going on. And then after my show, I went over and I hollered at him, and that was just one of those guys that I worked, you know, watched coming up in the game and just seeing the work that he put in, like, real OG shit, like Mm -hmm. D.L. Hughley and Said the Entertainer and Steve Harvey, like the kings of comedy, they all have stamped my brand, 85 South. They know what we do what we got going on. I got to work with them, you know, one-on-one. These are people that I looked up to. So just to be embraced like that by the Monique's and and the, the Bill Bellamy's and, and all the people who had influence of, you know, my comedy world coming up, it's just so dope to be embraced by them. Yeah. You've done a number of what I call exposure shows. Yeah. You know, like Bill Bellamy's Who's Got Jokes, you did Comic View. Yeah. You did Last Comic Standing. Deaf Comedy was, Jam. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Robert Townsend, Partners in Crime. You did a like lot that. of them. You yeah. Know? So my point is, at have you reached a point in your career where you say to yourself, or you say to them, I'm not doing that anymore. My name's strong enough. I want that money now. See, the thing about it is, no. Nah. Because some of this shit is just personal. You know what I'm saying? It's just personal to be part of that alumni. To say, mm-hmm. yeah, I did Comic View. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was on a deaf, deaf comedy jam. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. I did Partners in Crime. It's like, that's that's my checklist. I would still do some of that shit. Yeah. Like, because the one shit that I did that had the most impact that I didn't realize was going to have the most impact was the NBC Last Comic Standing. Mm-hmm. And then it's like once I did that show and I started doing these little improvs and funny bones and shit like that. And it was just like the the influx of white and non-black people coming to see me. And the, the club owners was like, how, how do you fill this club up with so many different variations of people? It's because they saw me on this. They know me from the Monique show. They know me from Hell Day. They know me from Wild and Out. It's like it's just it's just the perfect gumbo of all of this shit because you anytime you do a show like that you got to assume that this they got a big audience too that don't know nothing about me so no amount of money can you know what i mean equate to making new fans that actually like what you do because hell they you might do might have 500 new people in here that come to 10 shows a piece Mm-hmm. And just follow you all around the country. So it's that's more like you said, the exposure and the promo, just to let people know, hey, I'm here too. Right. I'm an option. And I love the jump on shit that's just non traditional or like like a last comic standing or somewhere you wouldn't expect to see a ghetto ass nigga talking that shit. But I I got that type of comedy too. It could be as raw as you want it, or I can do T V family friendly. And I think that's that's one of the things that get overlooked by a lot of black comedians is they think that we only capable of doing one style of comedy. Do do your tenure in the business sometimes get overlooked because you've been doing this since 2005, correct? Yeah. Do, are you ever surprised or uh, taken aback when people 
kind of look at you like, oh, you just started doing this in the last few years? I actually try to use that to my advantage. Because you got to keep in mind, the people who know I'm dope, they know that I'm super dope. But the people who have no idea, that shit is going to be like a, the first time they hit the pipe. Like, where you been? Why didn't I know? That's what I. That's the feeling that I want them to feel after they see me for the first time. I want them to regret this being their first time. I want them to leave that show and go find everything I've done from all the years that they didn't know about. 